Happy Friday, folks. Happy Friday. We are back at it and digging into the book of Ecclesiastes. I love this one. One yeah. of my favorites. <laughs> one just... of my absolute favorite books of the Bible. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to be digging into this in the next several weeks uh, through every chapter in Ecclesiastes, Mondays and Fridays. And, of course, we post all this stuff on our website, goodshepherdsc.org. After we're done with the live stream, that gets posted up to goodshepherdsc.org. You can find a whole bunch of videos up there, the last 200. If you want to see all the videos, you can go to um, YouTube and subscribe to our uh, channel by searching for Good Shepherd Lutheran Church State College. And then uh, you can subscribe to our channel and you can, I don't know, see all 600 or so, whatever it is. There's a lot of videos up there <laughs> that you can see. All right, so Ecclesiastes chapter 1, Mark is going to take it away for us and reading the first chapter and then we'll discuss it. Ecclesiastes 1, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What does man gain by the toil at which he toils under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south and goes around to the north, and around and around goes the wind, and on its circuits the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. To the place where the streams flow, they flow again. All things are full of weariness, a man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said, see, this is new? It has already been in the ages before. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of later things yet to be among those who come after. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel and Jerusalem. I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a striving after wind. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be counted. I said to my heart, I have acquired great wisdom, surpassing all who were over Jerusalem before me, and my heart has had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And I applied my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this is also but a striving after wind. For in much wisdom is much vexation, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. Wow. Okay, let's pray. Father, uh, thank you for your word, um, the truth of your word. Help us to learn from this and um, the frustration of Solomon at a point in his life uh, that uh, we would see where true meaning and purpose is in life um, as we dig through this book that you have revealed and set forth for us that we can know um, you and know you more fully. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So here we go. Um, right off the bat, uh, it's not just vanity. It's vanity of vanities. Yes. In there. Yes. <laughs> and it comes from the Hebrew word hebel, which okay. means mere breath. Yeah. Like nothing. It's, it's... Yeah. It's a wisp of fog, a smoke, and nothingness. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's, so it's the most trivial of trivialities. <laughs> and he's saying everything is nothing. Yeah. Um, and he talks about, well, all of the work that we do, what does it come for? It's like we go and we build these great cities and then the move on and then the cities get reclaimed by nature. I mean, yeah. um, there, you know, there are cities that have, were striving at the turn of the previous century. If you were to take a look at Detroit, Detroit used to be a massive city and all sorts of people and all sorts of life. Right. And now there are neighborhoods in it which are overrun by wild creatures. I've read a story about a man who lives in Detroit proper who makes his living trapping. Trapping <laughs> furs, yes. Oh, Fur goodness. trapping. So, you know, this is, this is what I see in the world around us that, you know, 
there are these ancient cities in America that were built by the Native Americans before Columbus came. Right. And they've just been buried by time. Yeah. There are cities in Europe that were buried by time. And so one of these days, New York will be buried by time. Washington will be buried yeah. by time. Seattle, all of the buried by time. And, you know, it's all of our great works will come to nothing, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, it, he's going to get to that point right <laughs> there, but now he's kind of soaking the frustration of that. It's like things go round and round, and what what is the what is the meaning? What's the purpose of any of this? And it just seems like you strive after all this, and then you die, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's kind of his um, initial thing here. Um, and one of the things that um, is kind of a interesting thing I think we need to talk about a little bit more is verse nine and ten. What has been is what will be, and what has been is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Is there such a thing of which it is said, see, this is new, it has been already in the ages before us. So we have to look at this in the perspective in which he's writing this, and what he means by nothing new under the sun, because... Um, the Lord says, behold, I do a new thing. And the Lord says, uh, you are now a new creation in Christ. Yes. He's make, and, and the Lord says, behold, I make all things new. Right? Yes. So, so uh, that's not the perspective he's talking about. The perspective he's talking about is there is nothing new we come up with as sinful human beings. Yes. Under the sun, in other words, in this creation that we are, oh, we repackage it in different ways, but it's the same thing yes. over and over again. <laughs> there. So I think that's kind of important to see, like, the difference between the Lord can do a new thing, but in our sinfulness, we just keep on redoing the same things yep. over and over again. Like you said, you know, like these great cities are built. Well, that's all been done in the past. Yes. So like Detroit's not a new thing. Yep. <laughs> it wasn't a new thing when it when it was thriving. Um, my goodness, you were even talking about like uh, you know time has buried them. Sometimes they go down and they dig, and it's like four, five, six layers of different cities. That, yep. <laughs> that are uh, there's uh, when they were excavating Troy, they were like, okay, they dug down and they dug down through three layers of cities. It's like this is it. This is the kingdom of Troy that was defeated by the Greeks. And they started dating pottery and dating stuff. It's like, no, this isn't it. And they dug down and they dug down and they dug down like sick. And they found like nine cities just <laughs> built on top of the same place. It was like, okay, make the city, destroy the city, make the city again. Destroy the city. Again. Destroy the city again. <laughs> um, Jericho was famous for that. Uh, yeah. In the Bible, it said, you know, here you have Joshua and Joshua destroys Jericho. And there was a curse place that if whoever rebuilds the yeah. city it's going to cost across, them it's going to cost them their first and their last born and sure enough uh what well, was kings yeah. so this was a couple hundred years later they forgot and they rebuilt jericho and it cost the person it costs life in there yeah so all these things are just this striving this striving and it's like he's kind of like oh you know hey what control do we have over these things, generations come, generations go. The sun rises, the sun sets. Um, the the streams flow into the ocean and, or, or the lakes or wherever else, and it doesn't seem to ever be filled up. It just uh, keeps on cycling. And of course, you know, evaporation occurs and all yep. this stuff. There's this whole cycle in which God has made. So Solomon yeah. discovered the water cycle. Yes, he, he did in there. Um, and then... Um, since there is no, verse 11, there's no remembrance of former things, nor will be there any remembrance of later things yet to come, yet to be among those who come after. And it's kind of like we had, we do have short memories. Yes. And think, hey, I'm doing, no one's ever done this before. I'm doing this thing. It's like, uh, yeah, okay, it's been done before. You know, what is it? Hitler said, I'm going to make a thousand year Reich. That, no, no, no that, did, that didn't work in there. Um, yeah, and then he talks about 
he applies his heart. So he was looking to gain insight and wisdom through his own, you know, pursuit of these things. He's really digging into it. I'm gonna, yep. I'm gonna pursue this in verse 13. And I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. And it is an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. And you think about like, uh, you know, politics and yeah. all that stuff. And it's like, wow, there's still, you know, these, these people striving and striving after that. And we live in a kind of a strange time in which we have people, it seems like, on both sides of the aisle, <laughs> if you will, yeah. that seem to want to hold on to power beyond their years yeah uh, i would say biden is not really in a position to be holding on he's not cognizant enough and then you have um uh, senator uh from kentucky uh mitch mcconnell mitch mcconnell obviously has issues and or uh, uh feinstein feinstein can barely function it's like, what are, we, what are we doing? What are they striving after? And it's this unhappy business. It's just like continuing to strive for power and whatever. It's, it's, it just... And sometimes it's just power for the sake of power. Yeah. And, you know, they, it's what they do because that's what they know. And it's... They can't give it up. And no, it's just it's, like verse 14. I have seen everything that is done under the sun and behold, all is vanity and a striving after the wind. Yes. So much of that is... <laughs> it's just, so it's, much of that is politics. And, and vanity. What, pride. Vanity. Pride. Pride. And, and hubris. And we're going to continue on beyond our years. Uh, and I like the what is crooked cannot be made straight and what is lacking cannot be counted. And there's, I don't know, there's a sort of, I, I'm trying to think of the right words here. Uh, there's a sort of bleakness to the idea of knowing that something is missing mm. and not being able to place a number or a thought or an idea on it. Um, so many people go around this world with something missing in their soul and they know that it's missing, but they can't describe. They, they can't put their finger on it. And they can't put their finger on it. And yeah. a lot of people, that's Christ. Yeah. Where it's like you have this hole in your heart and you try filling it with all of these different pleasures of life, striving yeah. after all of these different vanities. But you can't, you can't, what is lacking cannot be counted. You can't measure what you don't know is not there. Yeah. And so... Yeah, that's a good. That's a very good point, and kind of bring it around to, you know, the emptiness of that. It is kind of depressing. They, some people, I remember kind of hearing like some of the, you know, NFL's greatest athletes, and and sometimes they win the Super Bowl, and they're like, now what? Disney World. Yeah, Disney. But you know, <laughs> yeah, like, now what? Is it? Was this it? Is this all there? This is what I was striving for in life. This is the pinnacle of my career. And then I got there and I'm like, now what? Now what? Now is that, is that it? It didn't fill the, the void that was there. No. And there's something else that was needed. Um, and then so he's, he's really pressing in. He's like digging into these things. He said, I set my heart. I said in my heart, I've acquired great wisdom, surpassing all of who are over Jerusalem before me. My heart has great experience, is verse 16, uh, experience of wisdom and knowledge. And I applied my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. Wow, that's an interesting thing. I perceive that this is also but a striving after the wind. So he's thinking of all these things and saying, how do I make sense of it? How do I make sense of this? craziness in the world around me uh the madness and the folly and the the wisdom and and but all of it's falling short it's all it just does not can't can't connect it in any way uh and he's saying as you pursue this and i i think i've seen this in people's life for in much verse 18 in much wisdom is vexation much vexation and he who increases knowledge 
increases sorrow. And um, sometimes people who are very intellectual have a sadness about them if they don't have a connection to anything else. It's like they recognize the issues and yep. the problems in the world around us and it's just like what do i do what i can't do anything about it whereas somebody who's like well i'm just going to live my life and you know as i said blissfully ignorant beforehand blissfully ignorant. uh not that we should be you know not <laughs> blissfully ignorant, but if you're just if you just have your intellect and you're, you've increased your knowledge and you don't have the hope of christ I think it's crushing. It's crushing. It is crushing. Um, and sometimes there's a lot of things that you're best off not knowing. And yeah, I've tried to explain this to people in the past, but uh, the idea is, is that sometimes there's a piece of knowledge out there that you really want to have. Yeah. But knowing that it's one thing or the other, neither one of those is going to make you happy. And neither one of those is going to change what you're doing. Yeah. So it's like, you know, finding something bad out about a friend. You know, there's something that you suspect about a friend. Will you treat the friend differently? No. Mm -hmm. Will you be happy if you know the answer? No, because that means one of two friends lied to you or something like that. Right. You know, and in an instance like that, it's like, do you really want to know? No, because mm -hmm. it doesn't help you. So you just ignore it and move on. Um, I'm by training an engineer. And part of engineering, the big part of engineering is optimizing things. And one of the things that you optimize for is optimization. <laughs> so it's like, okay, I can spend a hundred hours getting this to run 1% faster. Yeah. But that only saves five minutes if it runs that 1% faster. Do I really spend the hundred hours optimizing something that doesn't need to be optimized? Yeah. And so that's a lot of what this is for in much wisdom for in much wisdom is vexation and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. And it's like, there are things that you don't need to know yeah, and that you'll just be sad for knowing. So it's like, yes, sometimes you're better off just not knowing and saying, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I kind of, re when you were talking about that, it was reminding me of, a project I worked on once as a software engineer before I was a pastor in which I was seeking to increase the speed of the uh, of a certain analysis that was being yeah. done. And, you know, there were some things that I did that created, uh, made it run much faster. And then there's some things you keep on working on, working on, and you're tweaking out just a minuscule yep. amount of for much more complication, uh, a minuscule amount of extra speed in a thing. And so it's like, when do you stop striving? When should you just say enough is enough? I've uh, seen comments in code. It's like, don't look at this. This is just going to make you unhappy. <laughs> That's right. It's let, let it be. <laughs> and I've even seen things where it's like, okay, if you decide to try and work on this, make a note of how much time you spent. <laughs> and there were these people who had said, okay, I spent five hours trying to optimize. No. The scary thing is when I was in software is it's like sometimes I might go back a year later and I'm like, who wrote this? Oh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is terrible. <laughs> right? this, this is how to, what was I thinking? What was I doing <laughs> in there? Yeah. So these are the kind of things in life, right? So um, if we don't have our, our life rooted and anchored in Christ, it just becomes very depressing yes. about all the rest of things. So let's, uh, let's keep our eyes focused on the cross as we go through this, but also I think this book opens our eyes to what a lot of people are doing in life and striving for and the vanity of vanities of, yes. of doing that um, and that we can point them to uh, the hope that is ours in Christ. So let's Let's pray. Father God, as we uh, dig through the book of Ecclesiastes, we ask that you would um, help us to learn from this, maybe in our own lives where we have uh, been striving in certain areas that we need to turn over to you. 
Um, and also we would learn from this that uh, as we're interacting with people who don't know you, to sh point them to the hope that is ours in and through you, Jesus, um, that uh, in you is found peace. And that's what uh, so many people need in, our, in their lives today is just a peace, the peace that transcends all understanding that is found in you. Guard our hearts and our minds. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Have a great weekend, everybody. Blessings to you. Thanks for joining us again.